in the first five years of our existence, every graduate that we ever had in the program got hired in at a company. And so we decided to become the first community college in all of Ohio to offer our own bachelor's degree. And it's called microelectronic manufacturing, a high volume circuit board manufacturing and design degree that teaches students how to build a printed circuit board and expands upon what they've already learned within the associate's degree into Ohio's most affordable bachelor's degree, which is only currently costing $3,900 per year for a full-time student. This machine is called a DC sputtering system. It moves layers of atoms at a time from this copper target down to a silicon wafer, and it does that by first removing all of the air from the inside of this chamber and then firing ionized argon gas at this target that's up here. Every time an argon atom hits one of these atoms of copper over here, one of those atoms comes snowing down onto the surface of the silicon wafer. Intel for sure does this process. They build their circuit chips layers of atoms at a time. At one point though, a wafer would be completely coated over with a very thin layer of atoms of copper and some of those atoms have to be removed in a particular pattern of art. This machine over here is called a, uh, an ultraviolet light exposure system. And what we do is we put the wafer on this chuck right here and lay a mask down on top of it. That photolithography is a process that's used to make artwork that is so small that your eyes can't see it. On this circuit here, these are the wires that are going to connect two particular parts together that are ultimately going to form the interconnections between one part of the chip and the other part of the chip. So we sputter down the copper, then we put a pattern of artwork down using photolithographic processing, and then through wet chemical etching, we're able to provide additional processing that allows the uh, artwork to come out on the silicon wafer, and then we move to the next layer, and then the next layer, and the next layer. Intel does this up to 300 times for one typical like i7 type of chip. So once all of the layers have been completed, you might get something that for instance looks like, let's zoom in a little bit closer with this, and you can see that there is a lot of intricate level of artwork that is ultimately applied towards making all of the little interconnections that connect one of the bits up to another bit, one part of the chip up to another part of the chip. But what happens next is they get diced up. This is a silicon wafer that has been cut into small individual sections. And they're all cut and separated from one another on this little piece of tape, a very, very thin blade, which is, yeah, that's a, what John's got right there is a much better example with some of them that have been picked up and used in uh, additional circuits. This is what gets soldered to the circuit board. An interesting thing here, do you see these little squares? These are places where we have to weld wires. You see the, um, do you see that little tiny gold, gold wire there? This machine welds that wire down to where the chip is using a friction thermosonic, like a heat and friction type of weld. We put the chip on this little heated chuck that's over here. Um, this would come all the way down and weld that wire to the inside of the chip so that it can be connected to um, its, its package. So I'm going to take out some of these circuit board components. And what I'm going to do is connect it up to a practice circuit board where multiple chips would be attached all at one time. And that's done by first applying a layer of fluxing agent down to the circuit board. Next, I'm going to take my soldering iron and some solder wire. I take the soldering iron to melt the solder, and I uh, move the circuit board component into place, and then I let it go. As soon as I let that cool back down, though, it will turn to a solid and form the uh, both electrical and mechanical connection of that circuit board component. bare board like this mm -hmm. and we run it through these machines and it ends up and puts all the parts onto it and then so solders them down. Off. Yeah, it's kind of like peanut butter. So we put that onto the screen here. So what we do is 
all those holes represent where solder is going to get placed down, and then the parts get put down on top of the solder, and then it all melts together. You can see that came down. Now it's going to drag the squeegee across and put paste all the way through. That's a really quick process, right? So that took just like five or six seconds. That would have taken somebody an hour, and I have to do that by hand. So, so now there's paste on every one of those pads. So this is the SPI machine, stands for Stencil Print Inspection. So this has a pre-programmed with all the tolerances and recommendations that you want to have on this pad. So it's inspecting these pads to see if it has the right amount of volume on it. Is it even there? Is it smeared? This is probably the most critical machine in this whole line, as, long, as far as production goes. Right now it's just finding its origin. So it's, it's calibrating where it is in the machine by the temperature of the machine as it raises. Now we're going to pick up parts and put them down. So all the parts are down, including the little tiny ones that are right there. I don't know if you can see them. The real small ones are. So the idea is to put a programmer, program this, what angle we have it has all to be these put different down. zones. It has a it's got a preheat zone, polarity, like then it's got the actual baking side, zone, then it's got the cool down zone. So the, the zones slowly increment so it doesn't thermal shock these boards. This circuit literally is just kind of for. We do these for demonstration purposes. Uh, this circuit literally just blinks. 